welcome to session four of the work of the Minister of Youth. We've all semester been talking about uh, the relationships that a youth minister has and we want to continue to have that theme in this session because I want to speak to you about the relational aspect of, of youth ministry and, and really some of the reasons why that is. The reasons why we uh, make youth ministry and our relationships a priority is because we were created for relationships. You know, Genesis 2.18 says that it's not good for man to be alone. God knew that we needed relationships. He created us for a relationship with Him and relationship with others. We want to understand that relational youth ministry helps break down those barriers that we would have, that a student might have with us. That when we ask questions, when we engage with students, it helps break those barriers down. It also models Christianity. It models who Christ is and His desire to have a relationship with each and every person. So that relational aspect of ministry gives us an opportunity to break down those barriers and model Christ. How, how can I be uh, more relational in my youth ministry? Well, one of the things we can do is we can make time for relationships. There are lots of distractions in youth ministry. There are a lot of things that are placed on us, responsibilities that are given to us by our pastor and other staff. There are, are lots of things that are necessary to, to make a youth ministry happen and operate, and a lot of things that happen behind the scenes. But if we're not careful, we can allow those things to take away from actually spending time with students. So you have to make sure that you are taking time to be in those relationships with students, getting to know them on a personal basis. Also, you want to consider how you can be persistent. You can be persistent in trying to engage with students. That many times a student may be um, guarded initially, right? They may be standoffish. They may not want to engage with you initially, but you've got to stay with it. As you are persistent in your interest in them and their lives, you begin to break those barriers down and slowly have an opportunity to get to know who they are. And then finally, you want to go where teenagers are. So many times we consider youth ministry only what happens in our own churches, in our own youth groups. And we want to make sure that we're engaging students outside the church walls, that we're going where they are. And so as you show interest in their sport activities, as you show up for that concert choir, or you go to that band practice, or you are involved in some way in what they're doing, your, your interest helps them understand that you want to know more about them and not just their contribution to your youth group and your church. So as we go where students are, we have a better opportunity to engage in them relationally. I also want to spend a moment here uh, as, we, as we're reading about discipleship and evangelism. Make sure that we, we don't just uh, uh, jump too quickly past this, this issue of evangelism and youth ministry. We want to understand that that in, in our culture today, that if a student is not uh, hearing the gospel, if they're not responding to the call of the gospel and becoming a Christian as a teenager by the time they're in their late teens, it's less likely that they're going to become a Christian later in life. So it's a critical age that we engage them with the gospel. There's also a stat that the president of, of our seminary has been sharing with us that, that shows that the trend is that we have more churches and that the, the implication is that there are more youth ministries uh, in Southern Baptist life than we've ever had before. The number of churches, the number of youth ministries has in, in, increased each and every year. But what has begun to decrease over the last decade or so are baptisms. Fewer and fewer folks in our churches are becoming Christians and being baptized. So as the upward trend of more churches is happening, the trend downward of baptisms is also happening. So we want to make sure that we make evangelism, sharing the gospel, telling students how to become a Christian, we make that a priority in our youth ministry. That we're not only sharing with them the gospel, but they're also spending time making sure that we have uh, people and individuals and the structure of our ministry in place to help disciple those students as well. So those are a few of the things that I wanted to highlight this week as you're reading through uh, and doing the reading assignments. Make sure you're, you're uh, highlighting those elements of evangelism and discipleship through the reading and that you're also aware that the book review is due this week for this session. Uh, so make sure you're turning that in. Again, all assignments are due on Sunday before midnight. So make sure you get that book review in. And also next week is when the philosophy of youth ministry is due. So make sure you're also checking the syllabus, looking at those due dates and how that assignment should be structured. Get that turned in on Blackboard and I'll see you next week.